Have you ever thought just how boring or ridiculous news commentary is today? Welcome to The Real Jacks Podcast with Jim and Larry. The Real Jacks Podcast. From crime and politics to entertainment, you can expect something different. Now, let's get real, Jacks. Hey, welcome back to Real Jacks with Jim, Larry, and Crawfish, today's special guest via Zoom call is film and television actress, musician, woman's empowerment coach, and NFT artist. Can't wait to hear about that. Katie Chinakis. Welcome, Katie. Hi, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for coming. We're going to read through our ads real quick. Take a couple of minutes. My personal best is 117. I don't think I'll beat that, but we'll get close. Uh, Extreme Wings, four convenient locations, family sports, restaurant, and grill, more than just wings. Tremendous barbecue, open since 2007, 8927 Herlong Road, open 11 to 8, Tuesday through Saturday, and Sunday 11 to 3. Full barbecue menu, everything homemade to cater anything. They love first responders. Advanced window tent, 5024 Sunbeam Road, over 26 years experience. Three and a platinum dealer, highest level of 3M dealer around. They tent vehicles, homes, and businesses. Secure One Protection Services, Jim's company. Hey, your number one choice for protection since 1986-356-1111. D-Way Towing, 100 South Jackson Avenue. Phone number is 904-356-3929. Shannon Judge with Legends of Real Estate. Shannon Judge Real Estate at gmail.com. Phone number is 904-200-8158. Bouncer Roof Fun, Mike Kellum, former JSO and friend, serving North Florida for 15 years and over 10,000 parties. They offer a large selection of hoppers, water slides, interactive games, concessions, frozen drinks. They offer large event tents, tables, and chairs. Always discounts to first responders, rental rates. If you rent on the weekend, you keep the whole weekend. And Norm Brewer for District 11 City Council. We need fighters that will truly represent us on the City Council. Norm Brewer is that guy, constitutional conservative, former law enforcement officer, successful businessman. Norm will call it like he sees it, and you will have no better advocate on the council. That's true. Katie, welcome to Real Jacks. That was a that was a mouthful, <laughs> wasn't it? Life. That was Woo. He's as got fast it. as I could go. Yeah, he's got it down a little over a minute now. Hey, thanks for coming. Tell us about who you are and what you do. A lot of people know who you are, but let's uh, let all the listeners. Yeah, we read your that. bio and and yeah. just getting the history. You've been in acting for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I love acting. Um, I grew up, you know, in a Greek family. And so I grew up with a lot of language and literature and poetry, Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, and those really strummed my heart in such a open, vulnerable, unconditional way. And it led me to, you know, having this amazing Greek love and culture from my Yaya, who's my best friend, who I'm named after. And, um, you know, it just made me feel good to make other people laugh. It just made me feel, I felt that tingly feeling inside when it would be so exciting to have other people be in a good mood and that would light me up. And so I felt like it was a full circle of positivity, a win-win for everyone. And that's kind of been my analogy ever since I was a kid. Sounds like a natural calling for you. Yeah, 1,000% a natural yeah. calling. Lucky to find yeah. that. Very lucky to find that. Yeah. So talk about some of the um, the movies you've done and some of the um, other actors you've worked TV with. TV shows. Yeah. And you and, did a lot, yeah. of, a lot of police stuff. Yeah. You did a lot of, uh, were, you, were you an officer in any of those shows? No, no, I haven't been an officer yet. But one time when I was on Cold Case with Catherine Morris, she was talking to the production, the writers, that she was saying I was so good that they wanted, she was getting them. It would have been epic if it happened, but she was trying to get them to write me into the show as like her, a little assistant or something right. like that. That would have been so amazing. Outstanding. Um, yeah. I was a guest lead on cold case with Danny Pino and uh, what a great show. Um, it's one of the most difficult shows to book in Hollywood. I was told at the time, because in cold case, they always have present moment and then they go to the past. Right. So a lot of times with the TV, things have changed now with, you know, multiple diversities, you know, inclusion, which is really cool. But so I don't know how it is that now, but back then, um, like I went out for that show eight times wow. straight to producers, the casting directors, Rebecca Mangieri and Barbara Forentino, who's amazing. She's the head at Hulu now. Um, they would always bring me right to producers because they trusted me as an actor. They loved my work. They were rooting for me. I did great work. And so they'd bring me because there's a pre-read and then the casting directors decided if you go to the producers. 
But since they, you know, I had a, a rapport with them, they would bring me straight to producers. And um, I would be like in this little room with like eight to like 16 producers, right? Little, super hot and stuffy because it was like these smaller rooms. Right. And, um, you know, I would go in multiple times. And finally, um, you know, the the producers in the show, they were rooting for me too. And I booked the show and it was me as a poet. So how apropos, because I'm a poet, but um, it was... I was told one of the challenging shows to book because of of doing present day with past, you know. So right. it was like it was finding the the right lane and opportunity to actually be on that show. And like I said, I was a guest lead, so it was, su- it was such a great honor. Yeah, outstanding. That's that's a that's a iconic show, you know. Yeah, cold cases. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorites. And CSI, you're on that we, as well. We, we we're both law enforcement, former law enforcement guys, in all that stuff is interesting to us in any, yeah. any, any yeah. cold case for, I love friends. Yeah. The friends of house. I love friends of house. You can't, you can't, if, if you think you can com- commit a crime and get away with it, you probably can't. After watching those shows, you, you mean they, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd commit a crime and they'd find a hair from my head between here and Georgia somewhere yeah. on the interstate. So yeah. you can't get away with anything. But anyways, we like that stuff. Technology has really Cameras. advanced. It's unreal. It's, yeah. It's so extreme of like the possibilities of everything that's happening. But I was on CSI, the original, um, and I was on CSI New York. So I was on uh, two different CSIs, which is really, really cool. Um, my very first role was um, um, CSI New York. And, uh, you know, Gary Sinise gave me yeah. one of the best compliments in my whole entire career when we were working very intimately together, you know, like close, medium, long frame and then reversing the cameras, uh, he told me, like, you're a very soulful actor. So um, I didn't. That's a great I compliment. It, yeah. yeah. Great com- like, coming from him, too. He's a he's. You know, I really liked him in. Um, um, uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Yeah. Sorry, I drew a blank, but that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. yeah that's where I first yeah. really recognized him was in Forrest Gump and, and, and what a mm-hmm. great actor he was. Yeah, he's he's a great person and a great actor and. Now it's like, you know, reap what you sow. So it's like doing these podcasts last couple of years, I've been able to be like, oh, cause I'm just always like on the go. So I'm never like stopping and reflecting. Like I'm reflecting on things, but not like fluffing my own buff and reflecting to build my ego. But there is a, a fine balance of, you know, r- acknowledging the fruits of your labor. So I think through the podcasting, it's really given me an opportunity to be like, wow, like, yeah, I had this connection. Not only did I work with Gary Sinise, but he, you know, said this huge compliment from me in my career, which really set me off in my career of who I am as a human and as an actor, you know, and as a soulful person. And that comes through my work. And I've heard it along my journey too. And and as far as your, your, the journey of life, it's kind of, you know, you get these moments to look back at the things that, that define who you are. And that's, I think that's important. That's kind of why we did this. Uh, I wanted something that, that, you know, I've got different things that I'm interested in and, and entertainment's one of them and music and movies. I'm a movie buff and, uh, and obviously crime and politics and those kind of things. So we, we, we branched out and, 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 you know, I can look back and somebody will bring something up and it'll remind me of something that happened in my yeah. career or in my life when I was young. And, yeah. and it kind of Help, gives you, helps you understand why some things happen in your life and you don't know why. And then later in life you go, Oh, because I'm going to be doing this or that. Yeah. In, yeah, in, it's so you know. it's all connected. It's yeah. really all connected. It's a chain um, that sometimes you can't see the the whole length of the chain, but it's a lot exactly. of things are tied together. Exactly. It's like the energy and, you know, the vibrations and, you know, of of like sticking to something, being consistent and just knowing your faith and your intention and going along with it. And although it might not show up how we want it to or when we think it does, all of a sudden, sometimes like you'll receive these treats and gifts where things will show up and it's like, oh, it's unexpected. Yeah, it's unexpected, but also it's like a divine knowing as well, you know? Right. Yeah, I like did, that. Did That's you awesome. did, uh, did you get training in acting? Did you have to go or you just, it, it, how did that work out? How did you get started? Yeah, I'm a natural born talent, but I've definitely like studied it. with the best. Um, I've studied, you know, with multiple teachers. If you're in New York, even if you're not in New York, um, 
They have virtual now. Susan Batson, B-A-T-S-O-N. She has a book called Truth, T-R-U-T-H. It's a blue cover. I highly recommend reading Truth by Susan Batson. She was Nicole Kidman's acting coach for like over 18 years. Julia Pinoche. She does. She coaches like Madonna, Oprah. She's great. I studied with her in 2012. I did an intensive year program where like some classes on Monday nights were like 17 hours long, like four or five in the morning. Because I feel like as an actor, like a lot of actors will come do their scene and they'll leave. But I'm an observer as a human and I like to observe and I can learn so much by watching what other people say and don't say and watching their work. So I would always say to the end, plus it was like very expensive to be taking these classes. So I'm like, I'm milking every single cent over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm in, I'm all in, I'm all intense, but Susan Batson, um, virtual and, um, New York. Um, and then Leslie Kahn is great for comedy for cold reading, Leslie K-A-H-A-N, Khan, she's in Hollywood. I'm sure they have virtual stuff too, I think now. Um, uh, William Alderson, he was my first acting coach. He um, was studying at the Neighborhood Playhouse where Meisner was a teacher. He's like a, you know, uh, an amazing person. He's like a Bill Gates, like in the acting world, but he's oh, wow. Stanford, Stanford Meisner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then he taught at Neighborhood Playhouse and then William Alderson was an actor and he said, oh, and then he like shifted him into being a coach. And that's where Dylan McDermott went. And that's oh, where yeah. Gordon and that's where Gordon Michaels went and the neighborhood playoffs and they became best friends. And they're the ones that turned me on to William Alderson when I first went to California at the end of 2001. Hmm. Where are you talking to us from? Um, right now I'm in my condo in New York. So you, okay. Yeah, okay. In the city? Yeah. Tomorrow okay. I go to Vegas. <laughs> nice. And then LA. Yeah. So I, I just do one ways everywhere I go. So yeah. I, I, the thing is like, I don't know when I'll be back. You don't know where you're I going know, next. I know I have to need, I know I have to be in New York in June, but I don't know, like when I leave tomorrow, if I'll be coming back before June or not. Interesting. Wow. You're on the go. And you just pick up and leave like that? Just, or do you have plans? Mm, mm, um, well, I have something in Vegas. So I'm going there one way, going to Vegas. And then after, depending on my work, I could go to Atlanta, Santa Fe, LA, or back to New York. Um, I have to Packing be must Sandy. be tough when you don't know where you're going or how long you're going to be gone or... Yeah, I've been yeah. practicing minimalism since 2012, so yeah. that helps when you're a minimalist. I bet, and just get what you yeah. need out on the road if you need something. Quality over quantity, and you just take like sure. the essentials, and then like pick up what you don't have along the way. But you know, you know, I'm bicoastal, so I have everything in LA that I need. I don't need to take anything to LA at all. So I have everything here and in LA. Perfect. And in, and in Michigan. <laughs> Michigan, is that where you're from that originally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was born in Michigan. So I have three recording studios. Um, the one in Michigan is the best recording studio I have. It's the best because it's in my home closet from when I was a little girl growing up. Oh, and I, nice. all my little girl dreams, who would have thought I would be bringing Hollywood to my walk in closet? One side <laughs> is just the clothes, the other side is just those sound panels like you have. There's my mic set up, my mic stand, gotta my be, whole. Rec- Got to be comfortable feeling. Yeah. To be back 1, home. One thousand. Yeah, completely in your own comfort zone there. Yeah, and now I go out for Disney, Nickelodeon, and stuff. Right, Hollywood projects right from D- J- Detroit, Michigan. Because with voiceovers, you can be anywhere in the world. You know. Yeah. Well, we looked at your bio before you came on, and thought we need we need to let you tell us about yourself because there was a lot of stuff on there. So tell us about some of your film credits and other people you've worked with in um, in more television stuff, and then we'll get into your music. Yeah, we're big music sure. fans. And I want to save the NFTs for last, and the women's empowerment movement, of course, but my, my son is into NFTs. Dope. A lot of people are into NFTs, and I'm like many people, I still don't fully understand the concept. So yeah. I would like to save that for last. Sure. And, uh, it's a psycho, but I'll just ed- pin it educated. now. It's, it's psychological. It's- it's psychological, 1,000%. Now, that part I get, so that makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, but yeah, tell us more about your your, your TV and, and uh, film credits. Sure. My number one goal right now is to be on TV as a household name over uh, two decades of my career um, and, having, and having, like, a lot of success. Like, anything I've touched turns to gold and success is measured. Um, um, since I've explored everything, my number one thing right now is to be a lead on an animation series, uh, a lead on a TV show. So that's what I'm going for right now. Um, but yeah, I worked with, you know, um, It's Always Sunny with like Charlie Day. And I did a film with Nicolas Cage and 
Bad Lieutenant with Werner Herzog, who's ranked top 35 filmmaker in the world. Uh, I did a film with De Niro and Pacino in the same film, which was pretty iconic and epic. I was in the scene with them because there was that whole banter of them like not working together for X amount of years. So for them to like do this film and then me be a part of it, it's pretty prolific. I feel like I've been a part of like some pretty once in a lifetime prolific moments in life. So I'm very in gratitude and blessed for that. Well, we saw yeah. some, some actors, uh, I mean like De Niro and not Pacino, Pacino and some Nicholas other names Cage. that you, Nicholas Cage and some movies that you had worked in. Bad they, Lieutenant, they, which was a good remake of yeah. a Harvey Cartel movie. It's pretty good. Werner says it's not a remake. Yeah, it's 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 different. It is different. Is that um, is that Werner the director? Yeah, that was yeah. like a lot of banter back and forth, and when yeah. that happened, is he but. really is he really that hard to work with? No, he was great. He was really? awesome to work with. He was so amazing. He was so pristine. Oh my god! When I found out I was working with him, I went and got a six disc box set, and I watched all of his documentaries. Oh, wow. You know, just to like get immersed into mm -hmm. his body of work. But no, he was very. Specific, very I think specific. Had, yeah, as long yeah, as you go along like, with the, how he wants it, I think it it's easy. But that's the kind of person I am. I'm all or nothing. Like I'm a very good listener, so I listen and then I go for it and I give it my all. So I think he and I are intense in that kind of way. Hmm. But okay. he, I was told on set he finished rapping hours before. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't like go over budget. He didn't take up other people's time. Like he was done shooting hours before. And I, I think he finished production a few days ahead, like the allotted 25 days or whatever that he had. Hmm. So I think he's like very smart. He's really, very, he's really efficient. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. How he does those things. And you either vibe with him or you don't. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I think he had a special place in his heart for me too. Cause I, um, I remember him telling me like his very first piece his first short was in Cyprus, I believe, and, um, you know, in Greece. So, and I think one of his children's married to a Greek, but so I don't know, maybe, could, maybe I have a little. The connection. Yeah. Do you have a big yeah. Greek family? I do. I have a really big Greek family. A lot of siblings? Mm -hmm. I have three siblings, four okay. total. So okay. uh, two sisters and a brother. Okay. Where, where in Greece is your family from? And my sister and brother, they're in California. No, my no, where, from the, what part of Greece? Did, did my yaya's from? from yeah, my mom, my yaya's from the island of Chios, C H I O S. Okay. It's one of the largest Greek islands. It's from the south village called Ramila. It's where the mystica is from, the glico, the sweet. So if you see like white mystica, like it's gum, but it's also the glico, the sweet mm -hmm. that people have as a dessert and you keep it in the refrigerator. It's very delicious. They have, it's called the, um, the, the mystica trees, which were all burnt down a few years ago mm -hmm. and all that chaos was going on over there. And then my Prafu is from the mainland. He's from, um, Cardamula. Not no, the, he, I'm sorry. My Yaya's from Cardamula, okay. the South Village. My Papu's from the mainland Gallic City. Reason I asked one of my old neighbors, uh, his family is from Greek. He's full he was full blooded. It's full blooded. And uh, I learned a lot about Greek and the islands and the, uh, one of the islands they were from, I think Lesbos, and then there's a smaller island right next to it that his family mm. came from and he said when you need to make a phone call, you've got to go all the way to the top of the hill and there's one phone there. Wow. And but you wow. go I think you go to Lesbos and then the island is next to it and I I don't remember the name. It's not Eos, is it is it Eos? It, it might be Eos because it was a really short name. A really short name. But it's he, coming to me. They, now that's they, the party island. They still Everyone got a, goes there to party. Yeah, they still got a house there and um it's just about as simple and beautiful as it gets. Yeah. And uh he, he promised we'd go there one day. I need to call him up and say, Man, let's go, let's go. Literally you know, the, like, the COVID thing kind of threw all the traveling off. Well, here's a hack for you. Literally, like what, uh, last time I was in Greece, I bought it two days before at three in the morning, one way straight to Mykonos. I got um, I got it for three hundred dollars. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, it's good some, if you buy them last there. minute. Yeah. yeah. I went. So I was in Detroit. Then I um, I was in. I, then I went to New York. So I was in I was in the Hamptons for an event. Um. And, uh, and after the Hamptons, so I, then I went to JFK. So JFK to London. So I got the ticket from JFK to London, London straight to Mykonos. Hmm. $300 uh, one how, way. How long ago? That was right before the world blew up. Okay, yeah. right. Oh, right. <laughs> I thought that was a, one of the one of the deals that came up after the world blew up because they were, no. they were giving away airline tickets practically. Oh, yeah. You could go almost I mean, anywhere for nothing. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. I hear they were a lot of people were traveling for for very little. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't go anywhere. We had just come back from Italy then uh, in nineteen and then twenty, 
all, all hell broke loose and we haven't really been anywhere significant since then. Tell us more about your music. Sure, sure. Um, I came out with the debut solo album, St. Kiriaki, which is my baptismal name. I was born with two first names, Katie Chinakis and Kiriaki. So the Kiriaki in the Greek tradition were named after, you know, um, our grandparents. So I was named after, grand, named after my dad's mom, Maya, Yao, who's my best friend, who's 92, who's growing very strong. And her name's Kiriaki, and her name is after the prominent Saint Saint Kiriaki, which also means Sunday in Greek. So you hear Kiriaki all the time, but it's very rare. Um, it's very special to be named Kiriaki. And there's also there's actually an island named Kiriaki um, in in Greece. I haven't been to the island of Kiriaki yet, but I hope to. But um, I came up with the debut solo album. It's called Dreamland 1111, 1111, Dreamland 1111, and it's. Um, EDM music, and I have some spoken word poetry on there as well. And um, I released it on my birthday, 11-11. Um, not only did I release it on, in Web 2 streaming everywhere, I released it on Web 3 on OpenSea, and two of my NFTs, music NFTs, were purchased at Art Basel by the artist and um, NFT collector Blake Jameson. And uh, it's so awesome. And to be one of the very like first artists to have their music sold in web three is, is super cool. Um, but you know, for me, I had a divine knowing ever since I was really young and along the journey of life, I kept witnessing it, how people would have their flame out or be distracted or like they would get bit with like fear. They would get bit with something. And I was just like, always just very aware of it. Then I was like, Oh my God, I hope that doesn't happen to me or I'm not going to let it happen to me or when's it going to happen to me? And I was like, okay, is it happening to me? And there were things that were, I'm like, it's, it's, maybe it's happening to me. And then years go by. I'm like, and then I realized like, whoa, like you don't even realize I was like under a rock. I'm like, yo, it happened to me. Like I lost myself, right. Lose yourself to find yourself. Like I was in this labyrinth and just like totally disconnected from myself. And it was like the journey to go back home to myself once again, you know, to be connected with my core of who I was and what I knew before all these things that I learned in life. And so the album is about, cause I was thinking about other people too. Cause some people have never, from what I experienced with, you know, my coaching sessions and just like experiencing people, some people don't have that divine knowing or that knowing or that connectedness that I once felt that I know that's there deep within me, that's there. So I made this album, not only about um, claiming your power, but reclaiming one's power. So me, I'm reclaiming that power. That is this part of your woman's empowerment coaching yeah. coaching that you're doing? It's not only coaching, it's in my, my pot, my popular podcast. She's all over the place. Season four is about women empowerment and exploring divine femininity in all genders. Um, so, you know, part of it is, you know, being shamed and blamed as a quote unquote female identifying person at a young age, wanting to have all these ambitions and dreams and goals and being like, okay, nice little girl, let me pat you on the head. Oh, you're a good energy. You're good company. But when I came up with like business ideas or a business plan or someone to invest capital in me, like I felt like a lot of times I wasn't taken seriously, you know? And then I also felt like very tomboyish, like I was supposed to be a boy and like, I just felt really awkward inside. So you know, when like the whole non-binary thing like was spoken about on a, a macro level, it's like, yeah, I identify as she, her, but I also identify as they, them. Like, I don't want to be boxed because of my gender, you know, like, like you're like, there could be masculinity, there can be males and females, but there can be femininity in all genders. Femininity isn't just in females and masculine isn't just in quote unquote males. You know, it's, there's a yin and a yang. And it's like, it's okay for a quote unquote man to cry and show his emotions and express himself. He doesn't have to quote unquote man up, even though we say man up or like, that's the man's job or to take out the trash and the woman's job to do this. Obviously that's changed throughout the years significantly, but getting in and diving deeper into that even more is what I'm exploring, right? With all genders. So I'm not putting a label as I'm like, I'm this feminist or like I'm anti this or no, I'm just like curious and I'm exploring, you know? So that's kind of like where it all ties in together by me being able to speak my voice from being silenced and feeling like I wasn't heard and feeling like quiet about the things that I needed. Because you were female being suppressed. No, just, just as a human being, you know, just, just, just being human. And I feel like 
you know, I had this uh, beautiful woman on my podcast from the Philippines and she talks about domestic violence and, and being silent. So everyone has different backgrounds of their circumstances and their experiences based on, you know, the, the diversity and, and things of that nature. But it doesn't make it right or wrong. It doesn't make someone's story like worse or better. There's no comparison game. We're all in this game of life and we're here with what we've been given, but we're not our circumstances. So how can we on a psychological level dismantle our circumstances and show up and share our experiences so we can one learn and grow together you know and whatever works cool whatever doesn't work that's fine too i might have like a box of crayons or markers and i'm like i gravitate to these colors i'm going to take them and i'm going to play with those ones and the ones i don't i'm going to leave them for someone else and maybe someone else will come along and gift me different colors that would go along with my colors. And I'm like, oh, cool, thank you so much. And then if I'm done using some colors, maybe instead of hoarding it and keeping it, I can offer it to you and say, hey, are you interested in these colors? You know, like I liked them. Do you want them? If not, no no worries. Someone else may like them, you know? So being able to non-judge and not feel guilty or shame and blame, you know? Interesting, yeah, yeah. Okay. Talk to me about NFTs. Yeah, because I need an ed- education. Ed- educate me on that Both. because I don't think I can get enough education. Zach, our producer, he knows all about it, but right. we, uh, I, this is the first time I've heard about them. So I, I wanted to get, we pulled some stuff up, but I, I'd rather get cool. it from you. So Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, do your own research. It's not an overnight kind of thing. I've been in the space since 2018. It comes in brush strokes. You know, you learn, you're like, okay, my cup's full. You maybe keep going on in life and then you, get your fu- your cup full even more. NFT is a non-fungible token, right? right. Oh, when it originally when it, when it originally came out, people thought, "Oh, it's just a JPEG." Right? "Oh, what am I going to do with the JPEG?" But it's not just a JPEG. You know? It's not. It's a JPEG um, that has value, kind of. Yeah, exactly. It has There's a, value. Has a value assigned to it because it's yeah. a, because it's a one-off, right? It, mm, well, it could be or it's not, okay. um, but there's digital assets and the word is called utilities. So gotcha. there's utilities within um, owning the copyright to that specific NFT. And it's not just, um, you know, photos, photography. It can be paint uh, photos um, of your physical paintings. It can be your music. It can be spoken word poetry. It can be voiceovers. It can be animation. It could be a web series. Um, it could be a movie. Um, um, El Pacino's daughter, she's in the space. And uh, we follow each other on Twitter. And she's raising funds right now to shoot her film, um, about the Madonna in, in June. And she's, it's going to be the first female led, uh, NFT film because she's dismantling the psychology and the ways of Hollywood and how it is. So, um, people can, you know, have sustainability and do films from the blockchain through NFTs. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. I'm releasing about 49 music videos, spoken word music videos, web series and short films that I produced and that I have the copyright to all of them. So I'm releasing them um, on the blockchain in the next couple of months, are all you? of them. They're, okay. ar- they're already uploaded. Yeah, they're already uploaded. I'm just doing strategic releases. Very nice. Okay. So what's the point we, we of that have, though? We should have had Zach in on that conversation. What's the point of what? So what's the point of that then? What's the point of that then, right? So everyone's different. Right. I'm an individual doing this. Some people have a collective, a team. So when you go to their website, there's a roadmap and they're like 10% here, 20, 30, 40 to 100. This is the roadmap and this is our rollout plan, right? So for example, Astro Mojis, they, um, it's the first mental health and wellness project on the blockchain. And this Saturday, they're having the very first mental health and wellness festival in the metaverse, right? And I'm I'm a curator. So I curated some of the speakers because I'm a part of the collective and it's going to be every single month. And it's people who would go to Burning Man or LIB or spiritual conferences and spiritual like festivals and stuff. And so you get the NFT. And when you get the NFT, what comes along with that NFT, the non-fungible token, is um, they have a deal with Wim Hof. You know, the famous Wim Hof breathing technique. It's uh, Wim, W-H-I-M-H-O-F. And um, it comes with like two to $5,000 worth of utilities. Plus this on-growing community who are interested, doctors and scientists and psychologists, people of this nature who are licensed therapists who are in this community. So if like in the healthcare system now, you have to 
pick an insurance. You have to pick the price that you pick the insurance. You have to pick the benefits. You have to call in to make an appointment. You have to wait four to six weeks to probably get in. Then you go and meet someone. Then you tell them your whole bag. Then you don't connect with them. Then you have to go through the whole cycle again. You have to go and you have to find another therapist, wait another blah, blah, blah weeks. And you have to, it's so hard. But with this community, there are professional psychologists and psychiatrists and, and people on there where it's like there could be a room of people and there could be a conversation going on. And based on the questions they're asking, you may learn just by having it be so open. Like you could never have a bird eye view of being what is going on in a one on one with with you and a doctor. It's private. But in this community, it's a held open space where it's more, you know, communal and you can, you can ask questions if you want, you know, you can be anonymous, you can ask questions or you could just listen. It's up to you, but it's a great way to not feel isolated. So many people have mental health issues and they're so isolated about so many different things and you Google it and it's so overwhelming and it's like, but talk to trained professionals and the best way to learn is to listen, you know? Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. Listen with your ears, not your mouth sometimes because yeah. you know, people try to yeah. talk over you. So, yeah. <laughs> they're not listening. The yeah. people who do that, they're not listening. Yeah. Yeah. They're just thinking about what they're going to say next. That's right. Yeah. No, I, right. I, I tune in when I need to. I mean, I just got a pretty good education on some things I, I uh, yeah, it's amazing. wasn't aware of. That's what I like yeah. about this this venue, this format, is, yeah. is you're exposed to so many different you know ways yeah. of life and things and yeah. ways of thinking. So. Well, for you and your listeners, when they go to chinakas.com, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S, my website, and they put in their website, I have an automation set up. It's um, lingo, like Web3 lingo. So you can like get hip to the Web3 lingo. In addition, I have a pink sheet, which is people who I respect and admire in the space that I look up to that are mentors that are a part of an ethical community. And you can follow them all on Twitter and Instagram. And they have Twitter spaces, which is like, if you want to learn anything about NFTs, be in Twitter, just like follow all the people on my pink sheet. And there's a, at the top in Twitter spaces, literally I can show you right now. There's like 20 rooms going on, 24 rooms going on, rooms always going on and it's labeled sports, mental health, or like Bitcoin or um, NFTs or new drop or, you know, film or whatever, music, whatever, um, or, you know, people of color, like all these different, and they're labeled. So you, you can be like, oh, I'm gonna pop in that room. You can just listen. You're like, oh, I can pop in that room and you can just listen. And if you wanna talk, you can go to the stage and talk and they don't see you, they just hear you. And uh, everyone's there to give you valuable information. Is that like a chat room? Exactly, Okay. audio, it's audio. It's like podcasting, but oh, live. Oh, wow, interesting. Yeah, so a, that's it's, what it's like going need to, to a, do. It's like, I guess, going to a seminar you can participate in. You can listen, you can interact. And yep. um, bring, bring information to the table or gather information. That's cool. And all of that, all yeah. of that, and meet people to collaborate with. I've, collab Absolutely. I've met people and now I've collaborated with other NFT artists and we've done projects together, scale, grow, make money, monetize. Like someone at 7 p.m. tonight, um, this women empowerment platform, they, they heard about me through the community and they're having me as a, as a guest speaker to honor me, to share who I am and what I'm doing and then add value and gift people, you know, things in the community and, you know, to be more connected. So that's how we're growing together. I mean, it's what we want as humans, right? We're so isolated. We already know what doesn't work and what's not happening. So the people in Web3, the astronauts, the scientists, the tech people, you know, the, the innovators, the artists, the people with, you know, capital, they're built, building a whole new world. Like it's already happening. There's already a whole new world happening. Um, whether people in web two realize it or not, it's, it's, you're either jumping on and you're being a part of it and you're growing with it, or you're just going to be everyone. Gary V says like, in I don't know how many years, like in like four or something, he's like, everyone will own an NFT. Everyone, you already kind of do. If you go traveling right now for years, what, like 10 years for years, you don't have to print out a ticket, which is so good because it's it's so toxic. The those um, tickets, the receipts, and the the tickets there there's a lot of toxic chemicals in the the paper. Um, but right now, I can like check in for my flight. I can have a QR code on my phone, mm -hmm. and I, it's a one time thing. I go ching, and and I go in, and that's what I don't need a, a paper ticket. That's, yeah, that it's certainly the same makes thing sense. As an NFT. Yeah, we do that with with yeah, it's virtual. I guess we do that with concert tickets and things. Exactly. So certainly cuts down on the paper. And uh, I, I, for one, when I take my garbage out, and there's only two of us at the house. I'm amazed at how much garbage we produce. And we're, and we're pretty green. 
and it's I'm still like I can't believe we take this much garbage to the street and it's got to go somewhere. So it's that that makes great sense to me. To, I love to, what you're saying right you know. now. Because that's why Web3 is very sustainable as well. So like I used to go to in Bel Air, Beverly Hills, they have these, um, what are they called? Where you go when there's like foreclosure, someone passes, they have these- Estate sales. The, yes, estate yeah. sales. So I've, I've been to some pretty like epic estate sales and I would go and the amount of things that people hoard. Cl clutter, like, yeah, like, clutter. Like 300 suits. 200 yeah. pairs of glasses, yeah. like 50 pairs of shoes. Like it's all physical consumerism. So digital assets are on a psychological level where you still own things, but you're not hoarding things. Mm -hmm. It's better for the society. It's better for community. It's it's better. So like if someone, if I had like a, a, a really epic watch, like, like a collection of watches, if someone stole them, they're gone, mm -hmm. right? That makes, you had digital, that but probably, if you had digital, but if you had digital assets as like, let's say a watch, cause people are doing it already. There's digital assets with watches. So you could have a digital asset with a watch, but then be invited to like those kind of events and parties and communities and things that are happening that already align to who you are and what you want more of, except you're not doing it alone and are going to find it. You already have a community of people who are like-minded in that way, whatever that is for you. And if you don't know, you can tell me because I am on the pulse as an NFT enthusiast, as like an art advisor. Like I know, like I was there when board apes happened. I was there when Nyla happened, when WoW happened. I was in the room. I was in the room when, when all of it happened in Clubhouse. That's where it was, right? I was there when they were $200, 200. Hmm. Nothing like being um, somewhere at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but infant that kind of, stages. Yeah, infant stages. But that kind of helped explain it better for me that it's a it's a digital asset. Instead of being something you can actually hold in your hand, physical, it's digital. It still has value. However, this is where it gets amazing. That's that's for the most part. However, which is like crypt, the, like cryptocurrency. Yeah. I guess that's the original so, concept. Yeah. And so the other thing is like this. Let's say, you know, my dad collects baseball cards, right? Or like people collect like He-Man things or Marvel things and they're like super rare and you have like a signed signature of a baseball or a football. You can take a photo of it, put it on the blockchain, right? And you can make it a one-on-one or you can be like, oh, 11 people can own this. Let's say Michael Jackson signed mm -hmm. a shoe. Mm -hmm. You have the physical shoes of Michael Jackson and you took a photo of it and you put it on the blockchain. You could sell it like at a high price for one of one mm -hmm. and only one person can own that digital asset mm -hmm. and you still have the physical or two, you can say 11. I'm going to have, a, I'm going to, I'm going to have 11 people. Only 11 people are going to be able to hold this digital asset of this Michael Jackson shoe, but you still have the physical. You can one, keep mm -hmm. that, or you could do a thousand. It's up to you. So you can make the number of the NFT. Mm -hmm. One second. You mm -hmm. can make the number of the NFT, whatever you want it to be. OK, so but the thing is, let's say like you take a photo and you have the physical, you can one, choose to keep the physical or two, a lot of people like one of someone I know who wants to get rid of some of their furs. I'm like, you can put them, take photos and sell them as NFTs, but she wants to give the physical with the NFT. So you can give a physical of that baseball card, of that football, of that signed shoe of Michael Jackson. If, you, if you're a physical painter or a photographer and make a print, you can say you get this NFT and the utility is you're gonna get this physical piece mailed to you as well. Oh, okay. neat, okay. okay. So I, I collect things, physical things, and some of them are the only one in the world. What? Yeah, they're, they're oh, just- We can talk, well, we can, we can yeah. I can, I can help Like I have things that, that are one off. I'm the only one that's got one. These guys know what I'm Dope. talking about. And then I'm also a photographer. So some of the pictures I have are, there's no other except that one, but they can be duplicated by, by me. And then my wife is a professional artist and some of her paintings have sold for significant value. So how can those things that are all in the physical be turned into NFTs and, so and, if and, and, monetize, all of it. and monetized? All of it. All of okay. it. All of it. So all those physical paintings, it's like being a non-union actor and a union actor. When you're a non-union actor, you do the job, you're never gonna get paid again, right? For the most part. 
when you're a physical painter and you sell your photography or your sculpture or painting to a gallery, the gallery takes a cut, the the whoever represents you takes a cut, right. and then you sell it, you get the money, you don't see it again. However, with NFTs, let's say, did she take a photo of those, the pieces that are already sold? If she took, I have a fo- I took photos of she, all she my She has paintings. photos of all of her work. So she's created thousands of pieces, many hundreds have sold over the years, but still has a digital representation of it. There you, there you go. Someone has the physical in the world, but she owns the copyright because she made it. She can take every single one of those photos. Hmm. She can drop them as one NFTs, one by one, whenever, or she can put them in collections. Mm-hmm. If it's like Mother's Day or Love or Torment or you know, however the collection she wants it to be, but she can release those on, I would put them on multiple different marketplaces, right? multiple different marketplaces. So then I, you'll be, so more eyes can find you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's a little advanced, but something that would be smart to do is manifold X, Y, Z. You can create your own smart contract. And instead of using marketplaces contracts, you make your own smart contract as a sovereign being. So those, that's what she can do for her art. Even if she sold them, which I've sold some of my paintings and I don't have them, mm-hmm. but I still have the, I took photos. So I can sell them as NFTs and yeah, I can so, make it one of one or I can make it like three people can buy it, right? If it's like a super rare thing, mm-hmm. like that's super awesome. And I'm like, hmm, maybe more than one person would want this. Mm-hmm. Then I could be like, maybe 11, five people can have this. I've got so some, then let's, a couple of things like that. It's just the one, yeah. nobody else has it. It's the only one ever made. So give me an example so, of one thing. Um, it's a, let's say it's a vehicle that was owned and custom built by a very famous celebrity. Jay Leno. No, no. Jay's Jay's okay. got a lot of vehicles that he's he's, yeah. he's owned, but this one was owned by by a very famous musician who had it built for himself. He has since passed. I'm not going to put any names or anything out there. But you own that. Yeah. Or, or I'll go ahead and just tell you, it's a motorcycle that was custom built and designed by Greg Allman. Okay. And I so what I, you I have it, and there's there's no other one like it. It was custom painted for so him by is, him. And that's just an example. Yeah, this is an example. This is a great epic example. So what's going to happen is since it's a motorcycle, you could research to see and I can look for you to see if there's any motorcycle projects in the game. Probably not. And it's probably rare. So you could be the first because the space is so new. Like you could be the first to do something. I was the very first one to put a love poem on the blockchain that's coupled with the original Polaroid by the company Polaroid that they discontinued in 2001. Super rare. So, right. And I'm the first to do that. Right. And poetry's blowing up. Fashion's blowing up in the space. But I did it a year ago. So for you, and I could curate this with you. So for you, let's just take one example. So you have this motorcycle. Then you take this motorcycle. One. You take a digital photo, you can sell it as an NFT. Mm-hmm. Also, you could also make it a generative project where it's like you have the photo of the motorcycle and it has different like attributes to it. Um, you know, that's more technical with artistry, but you can make a collection of like 100 or 300, right? Like, and like, then, like doing limited prints to an original. Yeah, of exactly. Limited and production. You can, yeah, and that, you I mean, keep, that's what I'm kind of just trying to compare it to. Yeah, and you Numbered keep the, prints. you can... And you can keep the motorcycle right. unless uh, and then and then you get like 100 people or 300 people all buying the digital access to this amazing rare motorcycle by the celebrity, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And that goes in the description. So when you're looking at NFTs, they all have a description. And so you put the rarity of it, like you put you know, the story that you shared with me about your heartfelt of like why you got it, why, why you got it, what it means to you, how excited this made you at a time in your life and how you know, how you got your hands on it and the story behind it. It's like in a short paragraph, people see that and they're like, oh, cool. Like, I want to, I want a part of that essence. I want a part of that culture. I want a part of that history. It's like, it's like going to see a movie. I can talk about it with everyone because I've seen it. It's like owning a DVD, collecting this. It's like, you're a part of that essence and the energy of owning it. Now, after your stuff blows up and you're like, okay, after your NFTs all sell out and you're like, okay, I'm ready to like flip and make some money. You could very well put it up for an auction or put it up and say, okay, someone's getting this rarity, limited edition NFT. In addition, you're going to get the the motorcycle for it as well. So you can do that. Hmm. Okay. It's a whole brave new world. 
It is, and I've got other things, but we won't we won't bring those up now. But they're all one of a only one ever made. So um, NFTs. I'll, I'll talk to and you after after the after the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one thousand percent. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely hook up because she yeah. can teach you a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm always open for that too. Plus, the, the wife with the art. That's yeah. She's got beautiful stuff. It's and funny how things run together when we're talking about yeah. you know things in life, and then you've had this, and now it's opened a whole new world for you. Yeah, yeah. And we were she and oh. I were just talking about some of her art, how some of her favorite pieces. You know, she she was an up and coming artist. She sold them, and she looks back now and goes, "Gosh, I wish I still had the originals. I would just be selling prints and have kept the original." Well, it sounds like she really still does. Well, guess what? In, in yeah. a digital format. And yeah, and the, what she can do is she can do her own research. You can send her to my website, chinakas.com. She can click on NFT. She can see my four collections that I have. And then I can refer her to other people that she can research. And then she can have the pink sheet, follow them all on Twitter. But she can go in what you just told me and share that in spaces with other people, other fellow painters, other fellow artists, other women identifying people who, you know, wish they still had this. And, and then when you talk to people, that endearing quality and spirit is what people really like. And then that's how they become super fans of her work and then buy her NFTs because they have that compassion and that heartfelt saying, hey, she's like a really good person. And I, I relate to her. And I want to on. Yeah. 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 So you can do it with your sports or motorcycle. She can do it with paintings. Love it. And yeah. 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 Yep. Great. Great. Great show. Yeah. It's been great, a great show. Great ideas. Um, anything else you want to say? D d tell people, tell our viewers and listeners how they can find you, follow you, et cetera, and keep up sure. with you and, and, and with what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Number one. If anybody um, can I've... keep up with you. <laughs> you're you're so sweet. You're busy. You got a lot going on. You're so sweet. I appreciate you having me on. Um, She's All Over the Place podcast. It's an NFT podcast. I um, have a women empowerment series right now exploring divine femininity and all genders. It's all NFT related. So definitely check out She's All Over the Place. Uh, subscribe, like, re leave comments. That really supports me. I have merch on my website, chinakas.com, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S. So if you got some of my merch, you can literally, because um, Sabet, my friend who did Tokyo Punks, he gave um, the people who own the punks 1000% uh, commercial rights, like um, the licensing rights, like Board Apes Yacht Club and WOW. Um, uh, we have 1000% we have 1, the rights. So um, we can, I have a whole merch line of my punk. Um, my logo's my punk now. So y'all could like, I get seven offers a day for my, my punk. I'm like, I'm not selling it, no way. But, but if you go to my merch store on chinakas.com, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S, you can um, pick up like a t-shirt and like support me and like be a part of like NFT punks. I have coffee mugs. Like I have, I have a whole merch store, but that'd be awesome. You can buy my poetry book on my website. Um, and then uh, I do industry coaching, consulting. So yeah, you can just reach out to me on my website and everything we talked about and everything for like all my social medias, they're all on the chinakas.com. Yeah, that's the easiest way. Just go straight there. Yeah, go straight straight to chinakas.com and it, you'll yeah. find everything related to Katie Chinakas. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been yeah. outstanding. It's been an education. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I really appreciate if y'all would get some like coffee mugs for my poetry book or my merch line or something and then have it on the show. Have it on the show. You know? I was just saying, have it on the air. We'll yeah. do that. Because, because we'll have our, our producers here. He, he, we'll... We'll make sure he does that. Yeah, because on a psychological <laughs> level, when you have it, then you'll remember to keep talking about NFTs and it will bring you back to this conversation because our attention, our energy could be so many places. But when you when it's when like you're having it right in front of your face, you'll it, you'll remind yourself to like be in the good energy and the good flow of where you say you want to go. Right. Yeah. And I like the way you talk about energy and flow, because that's what it's all about. Life is it, it's just energy. And you're either flo you're either emotion. flowing where you're supposed to go or you're not. And you, if you're not, you're hitting roadblocks and and uh, you're not you're not following your path, finding your path. So sometimes well, it's hard. It's not hard to get off. Yeah. Well, Abraham Hicks. You can Google Esther Hicks. I, Abraham I, I, Hicks. I follow Abraham Hicks on Instagram. I read him every every day. I'm liking something about Abraham Hicks. I, re Abraham I relate Hicks. to everything on Abraham Hicks. Just about. Yeah, yeah. love. So you can listen to Abraham Hicks uh, on the YouTube for free. And Abraham says um, two things, right? Very simple, like you just said. You're either flowing, flowing, right? You're in the stream. You're either flowing 
or you're going against the current. You're either flowing or going against. So if you're flowing, stay in the flow. If you're going against it, that's when we need to be like, okay, we're, we're fighting. We're going against the energy, the flow. There's only two ways to go up or down, up or down. Yeah, I call it swimming upstream. If you're swimming you upstream. That's usually a sign that uh, whatever I'm doing must be wrong. I got to sit back and reevaluate. Yeah. And try to yeah. try, try exhaust something, you. Try something different. Yeah. He's right. It'll exhaust you. It, if you, but if, it, you know yeah. what? It's but sometimes it life. takes us a while to figure out that we're swimming upstream for an hour or a day or a week. And you realize, oh, I've been, or 10 years. And you go, I've, I've been swimming upstream because you get used to it. Because we're, also, design, we're, we're designed to, you know, put forth effort and so forth. So, yeah. And also what you said about what you just said is um, sometimes you wake up, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm flowing upstream. But it's like the first the awareness. Then you keep doing it. So the awareness is there, but we keep on doing it. Right. Habit, habit. It's like. But it's 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 re recycling and repeating the bad habit that we don't want, but we're addicted to the bad habit, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's jumping off that stream and flowing it, and like you said, exhaustion. Like you do it to one thousand percent, to you're exhausted, and until something happens, until something happens, and then people are like, oh, wake up. But instead of something traumatic happening, mm -hmm. how about we make the conscious choice to unhook from that pattern? when we have yeah. our health, you know, it, which is the number one wealth. Good note to close on right there. I was thinking about that. Don't yeah. wait, don't wait until you become ill. Yep. Good note. Hey, follow her on uh, Kanakas, Chinakas dot Chinakas dot com. And that's yeah, C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S dot com. We finish recording today. I'm going to go look it up as soon as we finish today. Yeah. We got one more, one more episode after this. And then, we'll, then I'm, we're going to, I'm going to pull Zach up. We're getting the computer. We're going to, we're going to get right on it. Get some merch. Woo! Yeah. Got Thank it. you so Yay. much for coming. I, I love you. Thank you. And anyone who's listening to this and they um, send me uh, a photo through my website, a receipt that they picked up some merch, I will give them a shout out on my podcast. Okay. There you go. We'll check the podcast out too. Well, yeah. So we'll be doing that. She's all over the place, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Thank you all so right. much for coming on, Katie. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Katie Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for joining us on, on Real Jacks with Jim, Larry, and Crawfish. Thank and you. Uh, Thank thanks. You so much. Have a great day. Thanks everybody for watching okay. and listening, and we'll see you next time. Okay, and next time. Bye bye. 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 bye.